Hi everyone, it's Debbie Mirza, the author of The Covert Passive Aggressive Narcissist. And today I'm answering or responding to a question someone asked me recently. She said, please do a video on how to get him out of your head. I'm reading it. <laughs> how to stop feeling like you're, you're not good enough, especially when you hear he has a new girlfriend. So this is a video um, response to that question. Then there's a few questions there, so I will talk about those. So first of all, covert narcissists usually attach themselves to someone else very quickly because they're people that um, have a difficult time being on their own because they need a, an energy supply. So when you're gone, they immediately look for someone else to be that energy supply for them. That's just the way they work because they, they don't have a strong sense of self. Um, or they're choosing not to. I mean, everyone has a sense of self, but these are choices they're making. They are choosing to get their energy and their life from other people, which is not right, and it's cruel, and it drains all of us, right? Um, so anything that, when someone is like that, it's literally impossible for them to experience pure happiness and joy and peace and love, because that's not love. Um, so know that if they're with someone else and they're portraying themselves as like so happy now, I found finally found someone I'm happy with and so much better than you and you know all that crap basically all the um it's lies, 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 lies. So don't believe the lies. Know that it's manufactured happiness. It's the appearance of happiness, but it is not real. Um, so that's helpful to know. And then also, um, cause I know it does mess with your mind. Like when they're with someone else, especially when they're with them so quickly and you're so easily discarded. I mean, that really messes you with your mind. And a lot of thoughts come in of, I'm not good enough. Someone was better. I was difficult. Someone else is easier. And that brings in just a whole bombardment of not good enough beliefs that enter our mind. Um, how to feel, okay, I'm going to take the two, how to get him out of your head and how to not feel, stop feeling like you're not good enough. Um, one way to get him out of your head, because this, this can kind of become like a you know, drug obsession type of thing when, you know, once you've discovered they're narcissists and you're having, I mean, a lot of this complex PTSD, you're having flashbacks and memories and you're reliving trauma. And, you know, some of you might be having nightmares and you can't sleep or, or you're not having nightmares. You just can't sleep because you have so much anxiety. Um, so one way to get, so that can, it can kind of become an unconscious addiction. You know, when our body, when we do things repetitively, our brain and our body learns, oh, this is what we're doing now, you know, and that becomes our new default. So it takes um, conscious effort to shift that, but it's so worth it and you, you are deserving of that for sure. Um, so a big way to get him out of your head or her out of your head is to take the focus off of them and put it onto yourself and your own healing and recognize, okay, for some reason, I'm okay with thinking I'm not good enough. For some reason, I, you know, whether it's from childhood or a long relationship where you were um, subtly demeaned and devalued and they were, you got all these beliefs about yourself and, and a lot of them we're not even aware of, you know? Um, so the biggest thing you could do is like I said, turn the focus on yourself and start looking at those beliefs and really start dismantling them. Basically, like for instance, take the belief and recognize these are just beliefs. You are not your beliefs. You are not your ideas. I mean, you are this beautiful soul that has been fed a bunch of lies and you've got to help, you know, this 
you've got to help the part of you that's listening to these beliefs change them and see truth. Um, one, you know, well, I'll, I'll say this. I was trained years ago. I was trained as a life coach by Martha Beck, who's an amazing life coach. And one thing she said is so profound and so true. She said, there's dirt, two types of pain. There's dirty pain and clean pain. And most of our, um, pain and suffering comes from dirty pain. The difference is when you go through a divorce, when you experience uh, uh, someone you love who's died, you need to grieve. That's natural, clean pain. Dirty pain is when you take what happened to you or what you experienced and you uh, form beliefs around it. I'm never going to find love. Um, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of, of love. I'm, you know, to this or not enough this. Um, I'm not deserving of love. I'm not worthy of happiness. You know, these are, these are painful beliefs a lot of us carry. And they are the dirty pain. And most of our suffering, most of our anxiety and grief is from these thoughts. And the good news is we have the capability to change these. There's a really um, wise woman who I love is um, Byron Katie, B-Y-R-O-N, and last name is Katie, K-A-T-I-E. I would recommend looking her up on YouTube. She's fascinating if you haven't heard of her. Um, she created this whole system of basically looking at a thought and coming to it from different angles to help your brain kind of go, huh, see it differently and really question your thoughts. So I'll give you a brief, brief overview. Um, let's take the thought, I'm not good enough. Okay. So you would ask yourself the first question, is that true? The second question, and, and you know, you're like, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Even if you're on the fence, if even if there's just a part of you that's wondering if it's true, you know, you can say yes. Um, the second question is, um, can you absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's true that you're not good enough? And usually that answer is no. You can't, you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt. You know, in, in a court of law, you couldn't prove that you're not good enough. <laughs> And then you ask yourself, and this is a meditative process, really, the next part, this is like the work part of it. You ask yourself, how do you feel when you think that thought? So even now, like think the thought, I'm not good enough. How does that feel? You probably emotion-wise feel sad, feel frustrated. You know, you can get in touch with what that causes you individually to feel. Then you can ask yourself questions like, how does it feel in my body? And close your eyes and say, I'm not good enough. And like where I feel it, I feel my stomach tighten. I feel the sense of my, my shoulders like drooping, you know? So you go through these things and you ask yourself questions like, um, how do I treat myself when I think that thought, I'm not good enough? Um, how do I treat other people when I'm thinking that thought, I'm not good enough. When we think that that thought, you're probably more defensive with other people. You probably hide yourself more. Um, how do you treat yourself? I imagine you would berate yourself with, you, you should be doing this. And why did you do this? And this is terrible about you and no one's going to love you and things like that. Then what you do is you... Imagine, what if you woke up tomorrow morning and for whatever reason, fairy dust was sprinkled on you at night, <laughs> whatever you want to say, by some miracle you wake up and you don't have that thought. So if you just drop that thought just for now, who would you be without that thought? And really take time to be with yourself with that question. Who would I be? What would my, how would I behave differently? How would I think differently? And already you can feel like even me saying it, if I didn't have the thought I'm not good enough, I feel like I would stand up straighter. You know, I feel like I would be less afraid of people. 
you know, so investigate that type of thing. And then the last thing you do is, um, and this is all on her website if you want to, you know, Google search her. Um, the next thing you do is you do the turnaround. What's the opposite of I'm not good enough? The opposite would be I am good enough. And then you come up with at least three pieces of evidence to prove why it's true you are good enough. Okay, so I'll give you one. <laughs> you look at a flower. Do they have to be any? They bring so much joy and fragrance and beauty to this world, right? Do they have to do anything in order to be that wonderful? <laughs> They're good enough just literally sitting there being a beautiful flower. And the same is true of you. There's literally nothing you have to add or take, in, take away from yourself to be good enough. And so you keep going with those um, pieces of evidence because what you're doing is you're building a new, new neural pathway and you're going to eventually replace that belief and the new solid belief you're truly going to believe is you are absolutely 100% good enough. And if anyone else doesn't think you are, that is a reflection of their own internal stuff that's going on inside of them. Because think about it. If you feel so much love, you look at other people with love. You would never dream of looking at them as not good enough, right? So if someone is looking at you as not good enough, they are not experiencing love. Um, so I hope that's helpful. So I think that it's a, it's a power, the more you do this, I mean, I think, she, yeah. So anyway, I could go on another track there. <laughs> um, but take, take the focus off of the narcissist more and more and look to yourself and go, okay, why was I okay? Even though this was very covert, Looking back, there are ways that I was clearly demeaned and devalued. Why was I okay with that? What beliefs do I have in my mind that I'm believing that made it okay for me to be in this type of relationship? And the more you focus on yourself and the more healing, you will become so clear and you will never be, be get in these relationships again because you will have experienced love um, from yourself and you won't settle for any less than that. You'll know how worthy you are. You'll know how good enough you are. <sighs> that was a lot. Isn't that nice? Feels nice. <laughs> okay. I'm sending you so much love. I hope this was helpful and know that you are good enough and you are worthy of love and be really, really kind to yourself today. And I will talk to you soon.